What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video we are going to take a look at one of my new favorite Next.js 13 component libraries. This video is going to cover the new component library from Radix called Radix UI Themes. So initially Radix was just a bunch of things called primitives, which means they had no styling initially and you had to style everything yourself. But with Radix UI themes, they're giving you a bunch of pre-made components to make development as easy as possible. Radix UI themes has amazing documentation for all the different components, and it also fully supports server-side and client-side rendering. In this video, we are going to build a very simple coding issue tracker just like this. It seems simple, but we're going to learn a bunch of different things. For example, how to use cards in Radix UI, how to use the row styling and the flex styling. And also, we're going to subtly show how to use icons in Radix UI with this comment component right here. This project is a great introduction to Radix UI themes, and it's going to show you all the initial functionality you need to understand. After this video, you can continue to build with Radix UI, and I think you'll have a great foundation from the concepts we discuss here. A really great addition to Radix UI themes is that inside of any of your applications, you can import this theme panel. The theme panel lets you see what your application looks like with different settings on its appearance. For example, we can change the accent color, and you guys will see everything changes just a little bit. I personally prefer the icy looking color, so I like to choose the blue for this one. And it really gives you a bunch of control as to what your application looks like overall. And also these gray colors will change what the grays look like. And you can also go to a light or a dark mode as well. The theme panel is a really cool addition to the project, especially if you were to imagine you have a full software as a service. You can just go in there and change everything and just get the most ideal look you want. Now we can get started by building our Next.js 13 project. I'm getting started here by going over to an empty folder in Visual Studio Code and using the command npx create-next-app to create a Next.js application. You want to make sure to use at latest to get the latest version and then the name of your folder you're going to create. So I'm just going to say my-app. To make things easier in the command line, you can tell it to use TypeScript by saying dash dash TypeScript then dash dash Tailwind to make sure to install Tailwind and then also dash dash ESLint. We can then press enter. We do want to use a source directory. We do want to use the app router as that's the latest router. And we don't need to do the default import alias, so we can say no. So now our application is set up, we can go into the folder which created our application by saying cd my app. As always, we have that source folder, which is incredibly important. Within the source folder, we then have the app directory. If we want to see what the application looks like by default, we can go into the command line and say npm run dev. Everything is going to be running on localhost 3000, and we have the boilerplate Next.js application. Let's get started by removing some of this boilerplate code. So we can go into our app directory, and we can go into page.tsx. This is pretty much all the code we just saw on the screen before. To simplify our lives, I'm going to delete everything except this outside main tag, because we're going to use some of that styling ourselves. So go inside of here and delete everything inside of main. Now that everything is deleted, we should have a completely blank application, which is exactly what we want. Now we can set up Radix UI themes, which is super easy. The first thing we can do is go into our command line and then npm install at radix ui slash themes. Then press enter. Inside of our layout.tsx could be imagined as like the base root of our application. And so we're going to want to go in here and then set up some styling. So we can go to the top and then import a CSS document from Radix UI, which has all the CSS for all the different components. So we can go in here and say import at Radix UI slash themes slash styles.css. And then we are going to want to import the theme component from at Radix UI slash themes. This is a component that's going to wrap around our application and give it access to Radix UI themes and all the different styling and functionality it needs. So in your layout, a basic way of understanding this is that your entire application is rendered within children here. So to give our entire application access to the theme, we can use that theme tag and wrap it around the children like this. And so now we can save our application and npm run dev again. And now we're completely set up to use Radix UI themes within our application. One quick thing you guys don't really have to worry about is inside of our globals.css is some boilerplate CSS from Next.js. To make sure we're only using the styling from Radix UI themes, we're going to delete everything except the Tailwind stuff imported at the top here. So delete everything there and then save your CSS file. Now we can go on over to page.tsx and start actually using components from Radix UI themes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import a container from at Radix UI themes. 
A container is a very simple way for us to contain the content in our website to a certain length. For example, the project we're going to build is kind of like a single column. So everything is going to be contained with the container. And Radix UI is interesting because it gives you a bunch of different sizes you can choose from. You can just look at these visually if you want, but they are defined in the documentation if you want to look into the specifics of the sizing. But for this video, I'm going to go with a size of one. Radix UI themes is really nice because they give you very simple components to use Flexbox, which is one of the common ways to structure out your layouts. So we can import the Flex component up here, and I want to make an initial heading for our website that has a heading and then also a description. So we can make a Flex row, technically, is what we're making right now, because these Flex components are a row by default. But we can change the Flex direction by saying direction is equal to all these different options. I'm going to choose column and I'm choosing column because we want things to stack on top of each other. So within our flex column now, we can have two pieces of text that are gonna stack on top of each other. For typography and Radix UI themes, you have some options. So the first thing we can use is a heading, which has specific styling for being a heading, <laughs> as we're gonna see in a second here, and also a text block. So we can see what the default heading looks like by just making a heading here. And I'm just going to name this one coding issue tracker. And then under our heading, we can have a little text here, which is just going to say, here you can find the issues relevant to your certain project. These typography elements also have the ability to have certain properties on them. For example, the color property can change it to a bunch of different colors, but for this, I'm just going to say the color of gray. If you stop running your application, you can just say npm run dev in the console, but I'm still running here, so I'm gonna head on over and see what our application looks like. And you can see that the text is being contained to the middle of the screen because of the container we're using and also because of some Tailwind CSS styling that we took from the default Next.js layout. I actually bring attention to this default styling here because it shows you that within Radix UI themes, you can still use Tailwind CSS wherever you want. And so that's another reason why I really like this library is it's super compatible with Tailwind CSS. So right now our project is in light mode. I don't want to blind you guys this entire tutorial, so we're gonna go over and change it to dark mode. So if we head on over to layout.tsx, we can actually pass properties into our theme to change what it looks like. One of the main ones we're gonna use here is appearance. And appearance has a very simple dark, inherit, and light. So we can just choose the dark mode here to change our application to a dark mode. And so if you refresh your application over here, it's going to change to dark mode, which is great news. Let's continue building our user interface by building out the little column here that's going to hold our cards for the different coding issues. We can head back over to page.tsx. On top of our initial flex box here, I'm going to put a padding bottom of four. So this is going to create some distance between a box here and something we might make under here. I'm going to use the flex box again, and I'm going to make a gap of four. This means that the items within the flex box are going to have a gap between them. And because we're going to have a column where the cards stack on top of each other, I'm going to make this direction is equal to column. So now we can go to Radix UI and import the card component. So cards are a common way to group together information in web development. So I can just make a basic card right here. And if I make a very simple text that just says hello, <laughs> just as a test to show you guys, we can see that the card over on our local host is going to look something like this, just to show you guys what we're working with. And because we're going to be stacking these texts on top of each other, I'm going to make yet another flex column. <laughs> I know I'm using it a lot here, but it makes sense for our design. So flex gap is equal to one and direction is equal to column. We're kind of making a big column is why we have to use flex column so much. And so within this column, we can start stacking elements. I'm gonna have the first row, just have some text like this, and I'll be like issue number 24, button is wrong color. So, you know, that's a pretty complex issue. You probably see that at Google or something like that. So we gotta make sure this is high priority. So under our text, I'm going to make a flex row. So I'm gonna say flex gap is equal to two. And these flex boxes are rows by default is why I'm not saying anything else there. And now we can stack little badges side by side inside of this flex row. And a badge is a little icon that it's kind of like small text and it's pre-styled for us. And we can grab it from Radix UI themes by just going up here and saying badge like this. And now we can go into here and say badge. Let's see here, this is pretty serious. So we gotta get all the teams on this. DevOps is the first one. I'm gonna make the DevOps color be let's say orange. And I'm also going to make a UI tag. And I'm just going to make that blue. And so you'll see these will stack side by side because we're using a flex row. 
And so we can already see how simple these little flex boxes make our lives when it comes to developing user interfaces. So under this flex here, I'm going to make another row, which is going to be a text, and it's just going to be discussing the issue itself. So I'm just gonna make some random text here. You guys can just say whatever you want. All right, so I've made my story behind the issue here so we can save this and see what it looks like in our project. Very serious issue, five users, the wrong shade of green. You never know what's gonna happen next, okay? But this is a good example as to how we can make little cards like this within our applications. Something important to recognize is that these three things are all within the same flex column and it has a gap property. So if we go over here and make the flex gap here, let's say like four or something like that, it's then going to give a gap of four from every item in our flex column. Just to show you guys how that's working, I'm gonna go change it back to one. On the bottom of our card, I want to show a little comments feature to show if people have commented on a certain issue or not. And this is going to involve using an icon. Icons from Radix UI are super simple to use. We can install this package here and get access to a bunch of professional looking icons that already make sense for the Radix UI styling. So I'm gonna copy this command here, go over to our console, and then do an npm install of Radix UI slash react icons, and then press enter. We can now run npm run dev again to make sure everything's good to go. So if you go into this Radix UI icons page and you scroll over a certain icon, for example, I want to use the chat bubble icon right here, you can generally scroll up to the top of your application and then import chat bubble icon. So it will usually be the name of the icon and then icon at the end, as dumb as that sounds. <laughs> so you can then import that from React icons like this. And now inside of our code, we can actually reference this icon and it's going to give us that little 15 by 15 icon. So make sure to go under the text we just made here, and I'm going to make a little row for the bottom of our card. So inside of here, we can say flex padding top is equal to one to kind of make some separation between the rest of the things and this flex at the bottom. And so now this is a flex row. And I know this is kind of confusing, but inside of the flex row, we are going to create another flex box here. And this is going to be a flex row where everything is aligned to the center. And so if you're confused as to what this align center does, it's pretty much a trick to align the icon to our text. This allows you to have your icon and your text all on one straight line so it's easy to read. So within here, we can reference the chat bubble icon just like this. It's that simple. You can also put more properties on it if you want to change the size of it, but I'm going to keep it at its default size. Then I'm going to make a text property here. I'm going to say text and I'm just going to say three comments. So let's go see what that looks like. So they're in a nice straight line, which is exactly what we want, but the three comments is a little too close to the icon. So let's go change that. We can do a margin left of two. And remember all these sizings are relative to Radix UI themes is where they're coming from. And I'm also gonna make the size of the comments smaller. So I'm gonna say size equal to one. So this is actually the text size. So instead of having to do like font size 24 pixels, there's a bunch of predefined sizes within Radix UI themes that make that text sizing a bit more simple. And listen, I'm not like a UI expert, but to put the emphasis off the comments, I'm gonna make the color equal to gray. And so if you were to actually link this up to a full website, you could wrap this flex box here in like a link or something like that that would bring you to a different page. So I didn't show this in the beginning, but I think it's worth showing off a cool design trick right now. Because this three comments is kind of locked into its little flex box and this entire row right here is a flex row that we have, we can actually put something in the bottom right of our card if we wanted to. We can do this by telling the flex row at the bottom to be justify is equal to between. This means it's going to prioritize the space between the two things. And so if you only have two items in your row, it's going to make the most space between them as it can. So this flex box here is counted as one thing in our row and we can just put another chat bubble icon to be on the other side of our row. And so you could have this be a different icon or have it say something different, but it's a cool part to Flexbox that I feel like was worth discussing, even just as an example. So I'm gonna get rid of this thing, sadly. And we can even keep the justify between because it starts your first thing at the beginning of the row, so we don't even have to change anything there. And so now that we have this full kind of card built out, we can copy this thing and have more than one. So I can make, let's say, two more cards here just pasting them in. So we have one, two, three cards. 
And as we can see, there is a little bit of spacing in between each card. And if you're curious as to where that spacing is actually coming from, is it's because remember, these cards are all contained within this flex column right here. Look, it goes all the way to the bottom, right? And it has a gap of four. So anything within that column is going to inherit that gap of four. And so if we wanted to, we could change up anything inside of here. We could change the text of each card. We could change the little rows here. For example, in our second card, we could do something like the back end team and it's going to be red because that's the hacker color, I guess. And on the bottom card, I'm going to make a hacking team. That's the most serious team in any company and we're going to make that green. So let's save that. In my opinion, Radix UI themes is really beautiful looking and it allows you to build this kind of like software as a service type look and also be super accessible. Hopefully this has been a great introduction to using Radix UI themes. Now we have one more cool thing to show off. If we go over to our layout.tsx, we can import that panel I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. So the theme panel just comes from Radix UI themes. And we simply just put it alongside our application. So inside a theme, we can just import the theme panel right here. Make sure to save your page here. And it really is that simple. It's instantly going to put this little theme block on top of your application and you can change the colors around for your application. So I like the blue one with the, so I'll be adventurous and choose this like brown gray color. I don't know what that's gonna look like. And I'm gonna make the full radius here. <laughs> so it's kind of rounded, but I just wanna show something kind of ridiculous. I'm gonna make the scaling be 90%. I'm also gonna do solid backgrounds. From here, you can actually copy the specific theme you have. So remember, it's gonna look like rounded corners and be a little smaller, I guess. <laughs> so we can copy the theme here. And if we go back over to layout.tsx, you'll see we have a theme that we can copy in right here. And so I know that was kind of a big step, but it literally copied this line of code right here. And so we can paste it in. And once we save our application, we're gonna be able to see our application into that theme now. So even we can get rid of the theme panel, we're done with it now. Make sure to save this page. And we now have the ridiculous rounded corners for the rest of our lives. So I'm not sure that's a good thing, but it's something we can do. <laughs> Jokes aside, I think is a really cool feature is being able to change your theme on the fly is kind of interesting. And you can completely change what your app looks like, especially if you have a bunch of components. We just have a simple little tutorial app here, right? But if you have a full application and you're able to change your theme like that, I think it's really interesting. If you made it this far in the video, I'd seriously recommend going over to thecodeletter.com and checking out my newsletter service called Codeletter. Codeletter features articles that are written by professionals and they give you insights to the latest things happening in software engineering. If you think a news service with the latest software engineering content is interesting to you, go over to thecodeletter.com and check it out. Hopefully this video gave you some great insight into Next.js 13 and using Radix UI themes. Thank you all for watching.